Today I thought I'd show you how to make some checkboxes using look and feel. So these are just standard highs buttons and we're just putting an icon in there and uh, styling them using look and feel and I'll show you the way I go about doing that. Okay so we've got a blank project here. I'm just going to close over this sidebar so we've got some more room and I'm going to add a button to our UI. I'll call it BTN check mark or checkbox, let's call it checkbox zero. And I'm just going to give it a size of, oh, let's say 200 by 200, nice and big for now, just so we can see it. We'll get a reference to it. So I'm going to right click, create script variable definition, and I'll just paste that into our script. And I'll delete the var because we don't need that part. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is create a namespace. I'll do that up here. And usually I'd put this namespace into a separate file, but for the purpose of our video, I'm just going to keep everything in one file so that it's easier to see how it all relates. So I'm going to call this namespace paths. And this is where we're going to store an SVG path. So we're going to go to the bootstrap icons website. So this is just icons.getbootstrap.com. You can use any icons you want. And I'm just going to search for check. And let's scroll down. So we've got a few check marks we can choose from. I'm going to go with this one here. And you can download the SVG if you want and open it in a text editor, or you can actually just uh, access the text here directly. If you're getting it from a different website, it might not have the uh, text like this and you might have to download it and open it in a text editor. Whichever way you go, you'll get this string where it says path and then D and it'll start something like this M10 and it will end with a Z. That's usually how it goes, depending on where you get the SVG from. So I'm just going to copy this part from the M all the way to the Z and we'll copy that. We'll go back into highs and we'll go to tools, convert SVG to path data. And we'll click this button here, load from clipboard and highs has encoded it now to a base 64 string. If you don't get it as a string like this, just make sure in this drop down here, it's selected on base 64 path. So we'll copy that to the clipboard and now we'll paste that in here. And we have to add a semicolon on the end because highs doesn't do that for us. And now we can go all the way back to the beginning. So this is our path data and this is the path data for the check mark icon from bootstrap. So I'll just put that there so we know which it is, was it called check mark or just check, check, okay. I like to um, include a comment with the name of the icon and where it's from. So if I need to trace it back in the future, I can find it easily. We're also going to need an object to hold our actual um, paths. And then inside this object, we're going to create a key called check mark. Oh, we can just call it check actually, the same as the icon name. And this is going to be equal to content dot create path. And then we'll do icons dot check dot load from data. And then we pass in the path data that we've got. So now we have this uh, check icon within our path namespace and within the icons uh, object. So if we wanted to access it from somewhere else, we could write paths.icons.check and then we get access to it. So that's the first part. The next thing we need is an actual look and feel function. And I'm going to create another namespace. We'll call this one look and feel. And we're going to have a check mark look and feel. And we actually, we can just call it check again, the same as we have for our path. So this is going to be equal to content dot create local look and feel. And then we want to assign it the draw toggle button action. So that's the function we're going to register. So it'll be check dot register function. And then we'll just find the draw toggle button one. There it is. And we can just hit F5 for now. And now what we need to do is assign this look and feel function to our button. So if we do BTN checkbox 
zero dot set local look and feel and then it's going to be look and feel dot check and I've hit F5 and now the button disappears because Heiss is expecting us to draw the button. Of course it's still actually there. Uh, what I want to do with the button is change the text to the word check so it's the same as our icon. Now I'll click compile. Okay and then let's set some colours for our buttons. I'm just going to set the background colour. Um, yep that'll do and the item colour that can just be black and that should be fine for now. Okay so now we're in a look and feel function. I'm going to assume that you have some knowledge of look and feel already so I'm not going to go into the basics of it. You can see my other videos for that. I'll put some in the description or somewhere. So the first thing we're going to do is get the area into a variable called A just so there's less to type later. The next thing we're going to do is set the colour and this is going to be used to fill in the square and it's going to be colours.withalpha so we can affect the transparency of it and the colour we're going to use is the object's background colour property or BG colour. I'll just add the A there. For the alpha value we want it to change if the mouse is over the button or not so we can use a ternary operator here so we can say obj over question mark 1.0 so if the mouse is over it's going to be full alpha full opacity otherwise that's what the colon is so that's like the else uh, we'll have it at 0 0.9 i'll we'll put a semicolon on the end there okay and then we're going to fill in a rectangle and we're just going to pass in a as the area so it fills in the entire uh, buttons area. There we go and if I hover the mouse over the opacity changes. But when I click the opacity doesn't change so let's adjust that. Let's make it so if the if we've clicked the button so the buttons down will subtract 0.2 from the uh, one that we have here. So we can do minus obj dot down multiplied by 0.2. So that means if the button's down it'll be 1 times 0.2 which is 0.2 and if the button isn't down it's going to be 0 times 0.2 which is 0 so it won't make any difference. So I'll hit F5 so now the mouse is hovering and when I click it goes a bit darker and when I release it lights back up. So just a very basic sort of user feedback thing there. You can of course make this more fancy. Now we're going to set the colour again. This time we're going to use the object's item colour one property. And we're going to draw a rectangle this time. And we'll give it a border size of four. So that just draws an outline. Let's make that a bit bigger actually. Let's give it a borderline of six. Okay, so we can see that border around there. Now the next thing to do is to draw our path and we only want to draw the check mark if the button has been turned on so if the value is 1 so we can say if obj.value g.fillpath and the path we want is paths.icons so that's our path namespace.icons and we could write dot check here but then it's fixed to always being this check icon so instead we'll use the buttons text property obj.text which we have actually set to check. So that way we can change the icon just by changing the buttons text assuming we have a matching path. And then for the area we'll put A. We're going to need to adjust the area because the check mark is going to be all stretched out but for, for now that'll do. So I'll hit F5 and we can see the check mark there. Click it it goes away. Now usually when I'm doing this kind of thing I would just write the new area here with whatever kind of formula I need to calculate the x, y width and height. But for the purpose of this video I'm going to write them all out as uh, separate values just to make it easier for you to understand because otherwise we'll just end up with this really long uh, piece of text which is a bit complicated to read. So we're going to end up with individual x, y width and height values. and I'm going to put them inside this if statement. So we'll have var x, and for now it can just be equal to a0. 
var y is going to be equal to a1, var w equal to a2, and var h equal to a3. So I'll hit F5, nothing will change because we're using the same values currently. So what we need to do is decide on the size of our check mark. And a simple way to do this um, is we could just divide the width and height by two. And let's see how that comes out. So I think that's a little small. So I'm going to divide them by, uh, let's try 1.5. And that's a better size. So that's our width and height sorted. And you could do this different if you wanted to make it wider than it is um, tall. You could increase the division on the height, for example. But for simplicity, I'm just going to have them both the same. Now we need to center it inside the button. So to do that, we're going to have to add something onto our X position. So first of all, we're going to start by finding the middle of our button, and that's going to be equal to A2 divided by two. So we're adding on the width of the button but we're dividing it by two. So that's giving us the center line. And then from that center line, we're going to subtract the width of the check mark, which is going to be A2 uh, divided by 1.5. And we're also going to divide that by two. So that gives us the center of the check mark. So we're subtracting the center of the check mark from the center of the box. And that's actually going to center it on the horizontal axis. Okay, now we're going to do exactly the same for the Y position, except we're going to use the height of the um, box of the, of the button instead of the um, width. So we'll do plus A3 divided by two and then subtract A3 divided by 1.5 divided by two. And that will do the same thing. And in fact, if we declare our X and Y after the width and the height, we can simplify this a bit because we can just change that to width and that to height or W and H. And it's just a, a little less um, to uh, have to get our heads around. Okay, and that's it. That's our basic checkbox done. But let's have a look at adding another path. So if we go back to the uh, check mark icons, so we had one of these double checks. Let's go for that. And what's this one called? Check all. So that's what we'll call ours. And I'm just going to copy this string up to the Z, copy. load that in and it's called check all from bootstrap and then we can just paste that in here semicolon on the end and now we can have icons.check all equals content dot create path icons.check all dot load from data and again, we just pass in the path data. Now we've got two consts here, actually both called path data. We don't want that. You can't redeclare a const and we should get an error if I hit F5. Yeah, so it's telling us we've got a duplicate const var. So what we have to do is delete this second uh, const and change the first one to a reg so that it can be reassigned. So we've got the original one here and it's just been reassigned here. And what I will actually do, rather than declaring it there, let's declare it up here. And then it doesn't matter if we change the order of these two around, it'll still work. So we'll get rid of that. There we go. So they're sharing this path data variable. And we'll hit F5. And the reason it works sharing this path data variable is because the program always runs in sequence from top to bottom. So it's assigning path data to the check icon. And then it's doing some other stuff. And then here it's reassigning it uh, to the check all icon and then doing some other stuff. It's not um, going to overwrite the previous one until it's until after it's been used, basically. So we should be fine. OK, now all I have to do is change the text up here to check all, change our buttons text. And now we get the check all icon instead. So you could have this for any icon. You could have it be a, a cross or um, a thumbs up or whatever symbol you would like to use. You might have to adjust the X and Y and stuff as well, of course. But um, I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to change the icon just by changing the text with this setup. Okay, so that's how we create a basic checkbox. Let's just uh, make a few of these. So we have it like we did at the uh, beginning of the video. 
So I'm just going to make this down to 100 pixels and we'll just duplicate these. And at the beginning, I called the button checkbox, uh, BTN checkbox zero. So Heiser's has kindly named all these others BTN checkbox one, two, and three. So I didn't have to do that. And then just down here where we're getting checkbox zero, I just want to change that to just BTN checkbox. And we're going to change this to content.getAllComponents BTN checkbox backslash backslash D. So that's going to get all components that have the name BTN checkbox followed by a digit. And then we just need a loop to assign the uh, look and feel function to all of these. So we'll have for X in BTN checkbox. And then we'll just change that to X dot set local look and feel look and feel dot check. And now all of them have the same look and feel function assigned to them. But if we want one button to have a different icon, we can just do that up here by changing the text for that one button. So there's another advantage to not hard coding the icon is that uh, you can have the same look and feel function give a different result depending on the text property of the button. Okay, I hope you found this one useful and you can use checkboxes in your projects now. As usual, I'll be making the snippet for this project available to my higher tier Patreon supporters. And if you're not on my Patreon yet and you'd like to join, there is a link in the video description. So please do check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like it, click the subscribe button and share it with your friends. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.